All right. So first project is going to be working with lines and extrusions to create a badge of some sort. Now that is extremely loose um, in that you can pretty much make whatever you want. It's going to be some sort of flat form that we're going to extrude upwards and make a set of sketches, line drawings that will be pulled into three dimensions through the extrude function. I typed the sketch. There we go. And then we can modify and put rounded edges, such like that, which we'll go over in a few. Uh, I will also be going over. Uh, you may start with a image if you it's a, if it's your own design. If it's something uh, an image that you pulled online, doesn't matter. I'll show you how to work with those. Um, all right. So let's share the screen here. First, I just want to go over the assignment real quick. Just reminding everybody um, what the project is. Uh, and I realize I still didn't put the dimensions on. Whoops. Anyway, uh, your de design, and mod design model, your own badge or emblem, whatever you want, um, based on your own designs or reference image. Uh, we'll be going through the initial modeling work. You will finish in, you'll be finishing these on your own. It is due by our folder by September 28th. Obviously, that's not next week. We'll have some time because we're going to troubleshoot things like that. But basically, going over what we normally or we have already covered a bit of, uh, file saving and, inter and interface navigation, importing images, which in this case are called canvases, uh, sketches, the different line types, as well as text, uh, different commands, but specifically lines and or specifically the extrusions. And then like the extrude command, which is lines and then into bodies. Uh, the finished model goes into our team folder. Let me change the that pop into fusion. All righty. Um, oh, one quick thing. I am working on this. So um, y'all don't need to make your own folders. Just add your stuff into here. The folder already exists. Under extrusions, make sure you go into here. We can move stuff around and stuff. That's perfectly fine, but just letting you know. So you'll be saving to our team folder uh, under the extruded badges project. All right, let's get started. So first thing is figure out what you want to do. In this case, I'm going to start from an image and then I'm going to copy that image. So look across your toolbar all the way to the right and then back one, insert. Now you have a bunch of different options here. The default one is actually the icon, the little picture image. And if, like, like I've said, mouse over something, pop up will <laughs> tell you what's going on. In this case, pictures are called canvases. I'm going to select what you got. If you got it online, there you go. If you got lo saved locally, there you go. We're going to go with, eh, we'll do the Jedi the Jedi image for one. All right. Now, what it's going to ask you is to pick a work plane. This coincides with your view cube that you have your front, uh, excuse me, your front, your top, and your side. It can be left or right, it doesn't matter because it's kind of mirrored. We haven't discussed this yet, but one of the things in Fusion and CAD work in general, you have your three different axes. You have your X axis, in this case, red, left and right. You have your Y axis, green, front to back, toward and away. And you have your Z axis, the blue, up and down. These create your planes. In the case of the front plane, that is your X, Z axis, front. You have your X, Y axis, flat down like you're working on a tabletop. You have your Y, Z axis. That is your side to side, or rather left or right, sorry. For this case, I'm going to, and I recommend, you don't have to, but I do recommend working on the X, Y axis. That is your plane, like you're working on a tabletop. Select that plane, your image will appear. You can select the top of the view cube and it'll snap to the top. Now, right now you have your toolbox pop up telling you opacities, which if you want it to be opaque, there you go. If you want it to be kind of translucent, there you go. You can play with that. Um, I'm going to let it default right to, the, right to the middle of the work plane. So right in the middle there. Um, you can scale this either numerically or by just a by a slider, you can rotate that. You can also, on the icons here, you can flip this. Now this is a mirrored image already, so it really doesn't matter. 
but vertical flip. So if your so if your image has text, we might want to flip it so it actually reads. Um, now the scale factors they are not dimensional, so you can't like it's not three millimeters. It's by a factor of three, so times three. Now right now, you can scale it to what you want, and we will attach it dimensionally in a moment. So if you need to rotate it, as I mouse over the actual tool, or rather the icon that showed up, this arc shows up. If I mouse over that arc, you see that the dotted line fills in a circle. I can grab and hold that and rotate that as I want. As I, as I ro rotate it, you'll see that this little degree uh, toolbox pops up. You can actually put in numerically, all right, I need this at 45 degrees, whatever. Or go back to zero, there you go. Scale tools, let me zoom in a little bit more. Scale tools, you have your up, down, left, right here. Those let you slide it around, but the surrounding little broken line and curve, these allow you to scale uh, non-uniformly. So if I grab and hold the side-to-side -side one, that oh, scales it in the y-axis. Go back to zero. Likewise, scale it here. Scales in the x-axis. Back to zero. If I grab and slide the curved one, that does them both. Now, this is a two-dimensional object, so it's going to scale that uniformly. The cur curved corner, that is your uniform scale. So in that case, you can see where it kind of starts to go. 2.403. So I can just type in 2.5. All right, 2.5 sounds like a nice, good number. There we are. Okay. Well, this project, and I recognize that I forgot to add that back onto the deed, onto the thing, but for this project, we're going to work with um, printability with a scale. So if you are in metric, let's say about 100 millimeters square. Doesn't have to be square, it can be rounded, anything like that. Or if you did decide to change your dimensions in the document settings, two inches with the little drop down and icon, inches or so, let's say 100 millimeters or four inches. I know those are not exactly the same, but whole numbers. To do that though, right now, I just use the scale factor. I don't know how big this thing actually is. We're going to go to inspect the drop down, and you're going to use, oh, no, I'm sorry. I had a complete brain fart. That is not how you do that. What happens when I switch between classes? I apologize. Um, on my hierarchy tree, you'll see that now, as I added a canvas, I now have an icon for that. Open the drop down. The little eyeball is how you can turn that off and on. Right click on the symbol or on the um, icon, Jedi symbol. Edit canvas, that brings you right back to where we, uh, when we brought it in. It's not what I want. Right click, calibrate. It is a dimensional calibration. So if you want to select, or if you want to figure out how big this is going to be, we can select from side to side. Anywhere around there, looks good. There we go, to the side. That brings it up. My image is currently from side to side, only 33 millimeters large, pretty small. But that's basically the edges of that design. So if I want it to be 100 millimeters, this is where I can now type in 100. Blows it up way bigger than the screen, but that's okay because we were way zoomed in. Zoom out. Now we have it 100 millimeters. That is not 100 millimeters from the side to side of the image canvas. That is 100 millimeters side to side of where I made my selection points on the actual image itself. So there we go. All right. From there, one thing I didn't do and you should do right when you start a project, just like starting any file, save it. So you can either hit the little save icon or command or control S, bring up, all right. Example, Jedi coin. All right. So to start any of these, you start from, at least for this project, with a sketch or a series of sketches if you want. Top left hand tool, create sketch. As it says here, enter sketch mode, you create geometric profiles. Geometric is the important part because 
they are not just random shapes, but you can make random shapes. So, yeah. <laughs> from that, it's going to be your starting point from a variety of the projects we'll be covering this semester. Uh, but it allows you to put dimensional drawings down. So click there. Where do I want to work? If I was in perspective view again, doing so would allow me to select again what plane I want to work on. I want to work on the same plane as my image. So I'll select the flat one, the XY plane. Snaps back to top. I'll hit F6 to resize. All right, it looks exactly the same. I've only, what has changed is I now have a pop-up toolbox and my entire toolbar has changed. This is where we have uh, the, um, the interface change. I'm sorry, the word fell out of my head. Um, it's attempting, Fusion attempts to um, know what you want out of it. I completely forgot what the word for that is. <laughs> Um, so you have your basic lines, you have a rectangle, two point rectangle, and you'll see when I open up these drop or open up these um, uh, toolboxes, you'll see the in the explanation in parentheses, there's a letter that's your hotkey for these. So for line, you don't have to go keep going back up and clicking line, click line, all that rectangle, R, circle, C. Now, this is only one type of circle. This is only one type of rectangle. That sort of thing. There are more in the drop downs. When I open up rectangle, you'll see there's a variety. Two point rectangle allows you to start at one point, pick another point. Those are your two major corners. Three point, you get the idea. There's more. Center rectangle, which is one of the default ones up here, creates a rectangle starting from the center. So if you're trying to make like a box around a center image or something or a center point, that's where you want to go with. Same thing for the circle. You have a variety of different circles. Your default one, C, only opens the center diameter circle. Uh, two point is basically the same, only it's for a circle. Three point, again, you got it. Your tangent circles allow you to create tangents off of straight lines. We're gonna get, If you're unfamiliar with these terms, we're going to get into them. And you got a variety of others. You got ellipses. Your other type of line, I don't know why these aren't pushed next to each other, but whatever. You have your straight line and arcs, which means obviously a straight line, or it creates a symmetrical arc off of that. The other one is a fit point spline. Now, there are different types of splines. There's fit point and control points. We'll get into the details of those. But what it does is this is how you can create curved lines Then you can manipulate. How you create them is by choosing points, and the program will create a curve that best matches those points. You have your mirror. This here, uh, sketch dimension. This is how you can check dimensions on your sketches. Like, wait, was that such and such many? Uh, was, it, was that 1.5 millimeters or two? I can't remember. You select that, and then you can also say, then you can also uh, change those dimensions. So, oh, you know what, actually? That can't be 1.5. That needs to be 1.6. So you can make your changes there. You have different pattern creations. So you can click, you can create one thing, create a series of uh, the same thing, you know, a pattern, uh, and text. Now there are new text options. Uh, it used to just be you just had to create text like in a regular box. Now you can create text on a line. Novel. Um, and then, like I said, there's a bunch of drop down stuff. We're going to get into all that stuff later. You also have your modifiers. Main thing is fillet. Again, fillet is a curve, an engineering term. Fillet is a fish or occasionally mignon. <laughs> uh, that's just creating a curve between uh, or through a corner between two intersecting lines. Uh, trim, this trim. This is a really nice one. Offset, it creates a duplicate curve, line, whatever, um, and expands it outward. But it's not just a copy. It compensates for uh, distance away, and it changes accordingly. It's a really nice tool. And, of course, move. Yeah, I don't need the setting thing. Over here are your constraints. These are how you can make snap uh, changes to your lines so that they have more um, architectural reference points. We're going to get into really how those work in a few as we create some lines. So let's start with exactly that. Let me get a drink of water. So how do you go about starting something like this? Best way to go about it is don't just start sketching lines 
anything like that. Try to reduce what your image is to at least some starting points. This image, this uh, Jedi symbol, is basically one big circle with some cuts into it. That would be an excellent place to start. So I'm going to start, in this case, with a center point circle, or center diameter circle, sorry. Select there, and the image starts right from the center. I'm not sure if this will work or not, meaning that I'm going to mouse over. If I need to zoom in, I can. And you'll see as I'm moving my mouse around, because the computer's a little slow, it's not, it has a little bit of a lag. But you'll see this blue box with a black crosshairs in, in the middle of it. The box is selecting just, it's snapping on a grid and the crosshairs just so you can see a little more clearly. And you'll see, because it is snapping to the grid points. As I get close to a line, it kind of sticks a little bit to that line. In this case, the x-axis, the red line. It'll do the same thing with the, with the green yellow axis. But I want to try and get that right in the center. Got it. Select, and I can drag outward. Now I'm going to try and make this close as I can. Now, what I'm seeing right there is exactly what I was unsure of. The image itself doesn't really start right in the center. So I have two options here. I can get it close and move the circle or use a different tool. So let's start with this, because one of the things about using center point tools, and I'll just snap to that. If it keeps track, your tool function will stay in place. So if it doesn't automatically uh, drop out of that tool, just hit escape and it'll uh, end that tool function. Uh, whether using center diameter circle, ellipse, which is starts from a starting point, or center triangle, what it does is that center point creates a reference point basically that locks it in space. In, within your drawing, within the coordinates of your whole build here. Now, as I zoom in, and what, or rather, let me put it this way: as I, what I mean by that is, let me select that, and since I moused over it, made it blue, and I'll explain the the uh, blue inset in a moment. I go to the move copy, or you can just press M. Brings up the move tool. All right, it's a simple tool. It's a simple object. It's just circle with the center. Let me try to move it. It doesn't move. It moves the point because what it's doing is it has locked that point in place in space within this environment. So let me hit escape. What I need to do, come on, catch up. What I need to do to change that is I find the center point, select it, right click, and this toolbar that opens up, and I'll explain what all these are in a moment. Down here where it says delete coincident. The coincident is the term for that locked place in space. If I delete that, now I should be able to select the circle from the center. Now I can move it. It has deleted the thing that locked that anchor point that locks it in space. So, all right, I'm going to hit escape. I'm not going to do that because I just want to show you how to do that. There you go. What I do want to do, however, is I'm going to use a different circle. I'm going to go to circle. I'm going to use two point. And the reason for this is it's kind of hard to figure out exactly where the, the center of that circle might be. So what I can do is I can just two, pick two points on a more circular area. I'm going to select about there. And then I'm going to just draw or move my mouse down and try to get that as close as I can. And that looks pretty good. OK. Hit Enter or Escape. Now it automatically gives me that center point for because it's the center of that circle. Great. That's what I need. So I'm going to go back, select the original circle, delete it. I don't need it. Now I have that center. All right. It looks like I think I deleted the wrong one. I did. <laughs> I got confused. There we go. That's what we wanted. Is it exact? No, that's all right. I can make that a little bit bigger in a minute. And actually, I can do it with the dimension tool. All right. I select the dimension from the center, out. Oh, come on, don't be a jerk. There we go. It's 102.65, yada, yada, yada. All right, it looks like it just needs to be a little bit bigger. So let's say 105, a little bigger. All right, that works. Now I can select that circle, move. Let's drag that around a little bit, get it to where we really kind of want it. 
still a little big. Well, we're going to get it close enough. You get the idea. Okay. I can always shrink that again by just how I showed you how to do that. Now it's got the dimension up. If I double click on that, brings it back up. So let's say 103, shrinks it a little bit. There we go. That's pretty close. Again, it's not exact. That's fine. I just wanted that for the curve. All right. So that's the general circle. Um, one of the things about doing any sketches is if you have this blue hue inside, that means it's a closed sketch. That's going to be extremely important for extruding. It has to be a completely closed sketch, which means there's just no gaps in it. So that'll be a lot more obvious when as I start to actually freehand sketch stuff. All right, so let's start doing exactly that. I'm going to start with one of these wings. From here, I'm going to use a fit point spline. Like I said, this is creating points and the computer drawing in a line around them, or rather through those, sorry. So it doesn't really matter where you start. You're going to be closing this all up and modifying it anyway. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to work on one side. I'm going to start right here in the corner. I'm going to get as close as I can. That works. Now with fit point splines, the fewer points, the smoother the line. More points, the more things are going to upset the line. But if you want a, like, a really jagged line, maybe you're making something like a pumpkin. I... jack lantern There we go. Good Lord. <laughs> jack o lantern jagged teeth, stuff like that. I don't know. Um, that's how you could do it a lot more easily. So let me zoom back out. Starting point. All right. So for the first initial thing, it's a straight line because it's just drawing between those two points. As soon as I pick a third, it'll start curving. So let's pick somewhere up there, move along. Now you see as I create, as I move my line up, that curve is getting stronger and stronger. Good. Uh, let's create one right about there and I'll come up to here. Now that is starting to kind of dig into my line. That's all right. Let me hit there and I will hit enter. I'm gonna finish that line. Now I finished that line and now all of these little green additional lines have shown up intersecting those points. These are called your handlebars. Exactly. These allow you to move the curvature of that line. I know this this um, blue uh, hue is getting really confusing. That gets irritating. I can still move the points around. Select the point. Go to move. And if I want to just use up, down, left, right, I can use those. That'll keep the snaps in place. Or I can use I can mouse over the square that allows me to free free move called free transform. So I can drag that around, try to get the line to fit better. Okay, I like that. Come on, catch up, computer. There we go. Select again, select it again. The handlebar shows up again. Moving this hand, yes, grabbing the handlebar. You can see what happens to my fit point spline as I drag this around. Twist it. And it arcs the curve more, or it, it uh, does exactly that, it twists the line. But you can see it grows and shrinks too. I can drag the handlebar out and it expands the curvature of that line. So this is a nice way of just being able to just kind of mess stuff, mess with stuff. It can also get really confusing very quickly. So be cautious with that, but know that you can always modify it later. All right. It's not exact, but that's okay. That line is really getting irritating. All right. Start another fit point spline. I could have kept going with that single one, but just for the benefit of showing you how to work with some stuff, I'm going to keep going with, or I'm going to add to it. I'm going to create fit point spline again. Go back to that same point. As you see, you can see as I get close to it, it snaps on top. All right, there we go. Now I am starting a new line off of that. That's okay. Because what it's going to do, the difference between continuing a fit point spline and starting a new line at the same point is I'll have a sharp curve. And that better fits this logo. I just keep working up, get closer. Again, right up there. Nice. Now, one of the things with this is as I zoom in, I could also have snapped to the circle. And you see, as I move my line close to it, a uh, uh, crosshair, verticals, uh, a um, vertical and side to side. As I get close to it, it snaps to a blue X. That is showing you that it is now intersecting and connecting to that line. 
That also means that that's a reference point. If I were to change, if I snap to the line or snap to the circle and then change the size of the circle later, that line will stay stuck to that lock to, sorry, the line will stay stuck to that circle and will expand with the circle. Some nice features, it's called parametric modeling. We will get to that later. <laughs> but if you don't want that and you just want that as a reference point, that's okay. So I'm just going to press enter, the snap to the last one. So that line, that circle is really starting to irritate me. So I'm going to use a toggle that lets you have reference lines that don't really intersect or don't really uh, interfere with your project, but it allows you to make snaps and things like that. It's called a construction line. And it's the first option here uh, under your toolbox. You have line type, construction, and center line. Construction can be toggled with the X key. But if I, if I select that circle, hit construction line, it creates, it changes it to a dotted line. Excellent. What that does is now it no longer mouses over as a filled in or as a filled in circle because it's got those dotted lines, but I can still interact with it. So it's a nice way of creating reference points or reference lines and such without having something that's going to keep like messing with your drawing and such. Let me keep going, make this other wing real quick. Snap to the front. Now, right now, I'm not really going to be worrying about curving those corners. Because I'm going to show you how to use the fillet tool to make those rounded. But when you get close down in here, like I was saying, if you make multiple points close together, so like here, I'm going to make, instead of ending the line, I'm going to keep going. You can see how the curve gets much tighter. And then as I get further away, the curve opens up. That's just how, that's just how fit points blind works. It's really convenient tool. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the ends more pointed. Finish there. And again, I can tweak these uh, points. And then I'm going to make the recesses here out of the fit, single fit points blind. So I'll get along. I'll keep going on that and uh, do some other stuff. So let me finish that side real quick, and then I'll show you how to use the mirror tool and such. If I can have something to mirror. So that, it looks like the image was kind of slightly cut off. So I'll build in the rest. That's okay. Couple of points. Back out. One more. Now, if it's irritating going back and forth, back and forth to the toolbar, or you or you can't remember the hotkey, you're gonna keep, if you're keep, if you are still using the same set of tools, when you right click, I showed you all that stuff that comes up. This is your, uh, quick reference uh, set of tools. You'll see I can mouse over the actual tool. The most recent or the most recent tool that was used will be at the top. That's when the changes out. Your other ones uh, stay standard unless you change them. Now you can see this kind of wedge shape that shows up behind that. That's just to help you speed your process along. Means that you don't actually have to like carefully click just the toolbar. You can just click in the general area. And it just lets you move a little bit faster with a little less precision. So that's convenient. I'm going to keep going with fit points blind right there. And the whole point of that circle is I wanted to be able to actually use that sketch. So we'll see about that. I might need to tweak that. But there we go. So all right. So that's some of the start points. It's not exact. You're gonna you're gonna tweak it, all of that sort. But let's say that I want to work on this now. It's a mirrored image, so pretty easy. Mirror tool. However, when I click and open the mirror tool, simple toolbox opens up. You have your objects to select. Got that. But then you also have mirror line. You do have to create a line to mirror across. So that's why I showed you how to do the construction lines as well. You would think you should be able to just select like the um, axis line for whatever reason the mirror line doesn't the mirror tool does not work like that so you know go create a create a line i'm going to press x so that it has a so it uh appears as a construction line and i'm just going to snap along the green line my y axis and just draw straight through the drawing doesn't matter how long or anything like that there we go 
Now I have a construction line, so it doesn't interfere with my drawing, but it is something I can interact with. All right, now bring up the mirror tool. I'm gonna select all these parts, double click and it should select everything. But if it doesn't, let's talk about the selection boxes. You have, just like most programs, you can drag a selection box around something. There's two different types of selection box with Infusion, and it's in a lot of CAD programs. If you select, click, and select, or rather drag from the left and drag right, you'll see an orange box with a blue line around it. That will select only what is completely within the box. So it selected the points, and the lines. However, if I select from the right and drag left, you see it's a yellow box with dotted blue line. That will select everything that that box touches. So that selected all the things. That is not what I want. So if you accidentally select some stuff and you're working within a tool, you can either just exit out of it, which that's not always, exactly always the best option. Better option is in your tool floating toolbox, I hear it says objects, eight selected. I can just press the X and clear out my selection. All right, good. So I'm going to use my left select toolbox, select over. It selects all of these points. I actually don't want <coughs> these points, but I do want the line. So that's where the problem comes in. So let me cancel that out. Double click on the uh, the fit points blinds that I've got going. There we go. It's only five selection selected. That's all I need. Now I can go to mirror line select, select that construction line. And let me hide the canvas so you can see more clearly. Now it has mirrored that image. Now, you would think that mirror means that, oh, I can go back and make changes to the original and that'll carry over. In this case, no. Mirrored objects, yes, but in this case, no. So if you are all finished with that, great. Just like that. Oh my God, what is all this stuff that pops up? These are more construction point or constraint points. If you look up the top, the one that says symmetry, it's exactly what it's meaning. It's very irritating. It shows all of those. It gets very visually cluttered. So if you have something like this that you need to do, I would recommend waiting to mirror something until you're done. That way you don't have to deal with all these lines. But that is what those mean. So let me control Z. And this is what I meant by, see, the whole time I'm working on this, there's nothing being added to the toolbar. I do have the sketch being built there, but nothing within that sketch. Let me control Z that, no mirror, and the image is back. So great. So I'm gonna continue working on this star point. Let me pause here and check on everybody. Uh, all right, so working on this, gonna make some, I'm gonna make some sides, that's sort. Uh, I'm gonna make the, uh, the cone and such here. I can round that all out. I'm going to simplify some of this stuff. Like for this upper cone, I'm going to just use a straight line from that point there. And this is just me trying to simplify the drawing. I'm going to draw that point up to there. And I can, I would bring it all the way back down, but I don't want to because I am working with uh, what I'm uh, eventually going to mirror. So just hit enter to finish that. I also realized that as I drew that, that line is still on construction line, line type. So select that line, press X, changes it over to a regular type line type. Now this is one of the things, it, Fusion will save what you were just doing. So I finish that line, it still leaves stuff as construction line. Go up to the checkbox or the toolbox and, and uh, select um, construction line again, the blue, the blue box turns off, now it's back to regular. Okay, cool. So the reason I'm doing that, I'm just doing straight lines here because I'm going to modify these lines. So let's keep doing, doing that. So instead of making curved lines, I'm going to make some straight lines here. And I'm going to curve them after the fact. Makes things a little bit easier on me. And it might be a good idea. It might be a bad idea. I haven't decided yet. <laughs> so as I zoom in and I get my line close, you can see that as it gets too the line that I already drew, again, my selection box goes from a crosshair inside of a blue box. I mouse over the line and it snaps to a blue 
X, that showing it is now linked to that edge. But what if you're drawing something, say there, all right, we'll press enter, finish that line. Oh, I didn't want that last one. Okay, well, there you go. Add in the last line. What if I don't want that? Select that line segment, hit trim or T, and it'll trim it off. But what if I had drawn something and I realized, oh, you know what? That really needed to have gone over that, gone over to that line. You got two options. I can select that point, click and drag it, bring it over to the bring it over to the line. Blue crosshair comes up, snaps to. Also, I fit I close that I close that sketch. When I brought that line over, the inside went as a blue hue. That shows you that's a closed sketch. Other option there is what if, I don't know, for whatever reason, you just need to make that line longer. Go to modify, extend, and extends a line. Select there, and you can see in red, it shows you what it's about to extend to. It goes to the next line. This is one of the important things to recognize on Fusion. A lot of other programs, you'll have to set a parameter, that sort of thing. That's fine. Um, fusion functions on what is visible, what it can see. If you don't want something to interact, either make it a construction line or hide it. Otherwise, fusion will react to whatever it sees. And what I mean by that is here, this vertical line here for the star point, it assumes that you know, I want to use that next line over. And I do. So in this case, it works. All right. Hit escape to finish that tool. Okay. So those are just some of the simple ones. Now I want to start modifying this stuff. Something like, I want to now make these things curve. Now I still can mouse over and find points, select that point, and I can drag it around. You see that my line follow or my two lines follow that. Excellent. Same thing here. I can slide this up and down, but I can't move it off the line. Problem is because it's now linked. And those lines are all linked. So you see what happens now. <laughs> so when you lock a line to another line, everything moves with it. So just be aware of that. Let me control Z that. Cool. There we go. But I want those to curve. One of the best tools to use is the fillet tool. This again creates an arc with specified radius at the intersection between two lines. They don't have to be 90 degrees, just two intersecting lines. So makes a lot more sense just to show you what it does. Mouse over, select one line, my next line, there you go, creates a curve. Now the problem with doing that on your major lines, Fusion deletes the main line. So that's mildly irritating. But in this case, it's somewhat okay because I need both of those, or I need that curve and I don't need the middle line, but I do need that upper one. So let me control Z this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to chop out this middle line. So I'm going to go to, uh, to trim because, again, this now has an intersection and Fusion works off of whatever it can see. It assumes I can use that trim tool and it assumes those two intersecting points are the endpoints of that line. So I cut that out. As the computer catches up, really, you're going to crash over this? Awesome, it didn't. And you know what that means? Don't forget to save. <laughs> there we go. All right, so I trimmed that out. Now, these are two separate lines. Now, when I go to use a fillet tool, it's not going to delete that upper side. So those are just some of the little things to uh, uh, keep in mind. Fillet makes curves. I can enter this numerically, or I can just use the slider slider tool to get to what looks good. There we go. What if I want to make a bunch of these the same size? Use the fillet tool, and I can keep going. This upper one and this lower one are about the same size, or I can make all these the same. If I select the two, okay, well, that's way too big. Let's drag that back out. All right, 0.5, great. But what if I want these all the same, and I don't want to keep making a bunch of little tiny ones? Don't exit out of the tool. Keep going. Select this line. Select that line. Same. It makes the same curvature. Problem here is, well, that 
curvature doesn't really match. But in doing so, it, it, since I haven't selected out of the tool, that changes, or sorry, I haven't selected out of the tool that links these two together. So what that means is if I drag, all right, that can change this one. Hit enter. Oh, I think I accidentally exited out of it anyway. Great. Okay, I accidentally exited out of it because I went to zero. All right, ignore that. Whoa, what was that? That was weird. Now, one thing, um, as you can see, it's snapping between 0.5 and increments of 0.5. So if I want that less, I might have to put that in numerically. So 0.2, all right, a lot smaller, that sort of thing. Um, you can toggle those snaps on and off, not very easily. Bottom center here, open grid or open the grid snap tool. And there's this checkbox here, snap to grid. Now nothing snaps to that grid. It's kind of irritating to have to actually toggle it on and off instead of just have being able to hold down a mouse key or something, but nah, that's the way this works. Anyway, what I had tried to do was link those radii of the um, fillet. So let me try this again to there, uh, let's say 0.2. That looks good. All right, do the same, 0.2. It's gonna keep doing those 0.2, great. Now what I should be able to do is change this, this first one here. Are you, you know what? I think 0.5 works. Both of them now change to 0.5. So you can link those together. It's a nice, it's a nice way to work. Um, same thing, I'm gonna add some fillets into here and you can just keep, kind of play this around. But you get the idea here making some curves. Um, one other thing I want to show you, a lot of you have uh, segmented elements here. Now, this drawing, it's just kind of a flat thing. So when I extrude it, it'll just be a single thing. Kind of boring. So I'm going to add in some stuff to this. This will reference more of what y'all are doing. I'm going to add in some lines to make like some feathery details and such on here. Now, this is going to get mirrored across, so I don't have to worry about drawing in this side, no problem. What I do want to do, however, is I want to add some lines uh, into here to kind of make these feathery details a little more, more feathery-ish. Now, I can do this by hand. There's a fit point spline. I can draw this in, da 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 da, -da curve that in. That works great. I don't want to do that. I want to be lazy. The other tool is the offset tool. This creates a copy of the line selected, and you can choose how far away it is, and it will change accordingly. Basically, it's a non-uniform scale dependent on how far away the line is from the original. So I'm going to select that, see if it'll let me select. Ah, it's going to make me select the whole thing. Dang, I was hoping I could uh, select only that one segment. Well, you get the idea here. I can move in and out, or I can move further away. That doesn't work as well. But as I move further in, you can see how it's creating an entire profile further in from my drawing. Really cool way to work. I don't want this section. I can delete that off. That's okay. But this now works by its complete offset of all of this. What that means is this will allow me to make a staggered extrusion. So like there, now I got all that. I'm going to trim away these lines here. I don't want these additional elements. Zoom in, chop that out. Now I'm going to use a selection box. Nah, that wasn't going to work. Double click there. Great. Chop away the, the excess one. But I do have this cool inset here. And if you want, hell, you can do another one. Offset, select that one. Go even further. And you can see how as I the further away from the original lines I get, the more it modifies itself. It's a really cool tool when it works right. <laughs> Let's make this a whole number and negative four. Okay. Uh, no, three. Better work. Okay, great. That I like. Okay, so let's save there. Offset wings. Nice. Okay. So that's a good starting point. Um. Now I need to mirror this across. So select the mirror tool. I need to select all of the this. So let's see if I can double click and let it and see what it selects. So double click the line. All right, that got all of that. 
going to keep going. Double click that other inset, that other offset line. Double click there. Double click there. Excellent. It got all of it. That's what I was hoping. Now I need to select a mirror line. Select that original uh, construction line. There we are. Mirrored across. Lots of constraints showing up. That's okay for now. Just gets a little visually confusing. But one of the main things you want to check is, is this a closed sketch? As I mouse over, or you can hide the canvas, you can see inside of these lines is a light blue hue. When I mouse over, it goes to a dark blue hue. That means it is a closed line. If it doesn't, sometimes this can get really tedious trying to find where the missing point is. And you might have to just zoom way in looking for gaps between lines. Gets problematic, but eh, that's part of the fun, eh? Okay. I like that. Well, let's use the one tool. I, we haven't gone over the video yet. Finish sketch. Done. All right. So the other function of this project, now by no means am I done yet with what I want to do, but just for the sake of moving on. The other main tool here, and let's uh, make sure to save, finished sketch, Woo. there we are, is extrude. Now, this is the tool over here. You can press E to bring it up by hotkey or obviously by tool. Um, extrude takes a two-dimensional sketch and literally adds depth by pulling that upward. So let's select that tool. I'm going to go to the perspective view by hitting the home button and I'm going to select some parts. Now, the reason I made those insets is so I could make multi-tiered elements to this. And what I mean by that is, let me select the main one. Select there. All right, now I can drag this up by hand or I can input this numerically. I think the thickest I wanna go with this is like five millimeters. So for this part, let's do four. Hit okay. Now, actually before I hit okay, I wanna show you a couple things. On here, there's different tools you can use within this. Right now we're gonna use mostly the default settings on here. But start, plate, start point is the profile plane. That's where we're working from. There you go. Direction. You could make this directional and go two sides in two different directions, just one side or two sides the same. So one side, two sides, symmetrical. Makes sense. Really handy for other stuff. Extent type for right now, just as is. Distance, which means I'm typing in the distance. You can taper this. So this is really handy if you were to just want a basic taper on something. And you don't want to actually have to like build that in manually. Or this would be really handy if you're like mold maker or something. Stuff with a slight taper will pop out of a mold more easily. So that's in degrees. Let's put a one degree taper. Positive numbers go outward. Negative numbers go inward. It's hard to see from here. But now you can see, I'll go back to zero. Straight. Negative two, so it's a little bit more. Little taper on it, negative five, a lot more taper on it. So there you go. That's a neat feature. I'll leave that on for that one. That might cause problems, actually. Let me just clear that out. <laughs> the last thing is this operation, new body. This is the built in combine tool or Boolean option, if you're familiar with that, um, or function rather, within the extrude. So you can link parts together or you can create them as separate bodies. You could also use it as a chunk to cut things away. You could make a profiled hole to cut into, and that's what we're going to talk about in a moment. So we'll select OK. Now, your sketch just disappeared. It assumes that when you finish the sketch or finish doing that operation, you don't need the sketch anymore. Yes, I still had stuff to do. So there we are. So let's unhide the sketch. There we are. Now, this is a way you can do multiple extrusions. So I'm going to hit extrude again. This time, I'm going to select those elements. And I can extrude this either higher or lower, possibly. Let's do lower, three millimeters. Now you can see what happened. The operation at the bottom here automatically changed to join. It assumes that I want to link those two together into the same body. But for now, let's just say new body in case I don't. Select OK. As I select these, you can see at the bottom here, more icons are showing up in my history slider. Different extrusions. 
Also, as I work with this, expand the bodies, you will see that I have multiple bodies in here. Yeah, we're gonna use, we're gonna make the body joke a lot of times. I highly recommend labeling stuff. So the first one is outer ring. Second one, left wing. If you're planning on uh, linking all of these, you don't really have to do this, but helps me. Right wing, okay. Last bit here is I can fill these in. Do one more extrusion. Select those insets. And we'll just do two millimeters. This time I can let the default operation go to join. Okay, it did not create a new body here, but what it did is it linked those with the bodies that it already was uh, adjoining. So it made it one single thing. All right. So let me hide this sketch here, clean this up a little bit. Cool. Well, this is where you're gonna to wanna to start modifying things because if I took this to, to straight out to extrude, or sorry, straight out to print, this is gonna be kind of pretty flimsy, especially looking down at it. These are some really thin points. There's a really thin point there too. Now I can see a lot more definition because I made these other extrusions at different levels. So those those of you that have like cross section uh, cross section bands or whatever different details, this is a really easy way to do stuff like this. But I want this to be a little bit more like a badge or something. <laughs> so an easy way to do that is I'm just going to put a circle underneath this, like I was originally drawing with this. Now I can go back to the original sketch, or I can just add a new sketch. So I'm going to add on to this because I want this to be kind of a separate thing. Select the body, or sorry, uh, select the origin plane. But you can also sketch on top of things. So if I wanted to make something specific, you see if I mouse over the top of this, it highlights. You can add a sketch on top of a surface. Really cool feature. But for now, I just want to do this. All right. Luckily, I have, I can see the uh, original sketch underneath. That helps out a lot. I'm going to create a circle using not that center point, but the center of this circle. To do that, hopefully it'll let me. <coughs> it is not. Oh, there it is. You can see just slightly the point of the original circle. There's just that center point floating in there. Select there. And I can drag it outward, and I want to make this larger than all the things. There we go. Okay. Now, that works. Finish sketch. Ugh, they hid the sketches. Now I can extrude that circle. And instead of going upward, because you can see that's going to slice into everything, I'm going to go negative two. I'm going to leave it at join. Well, actually, hold on. Let's keep it at new body for now. Because if I join, it's going to link everything immediately. Okay. Now I have something I can work from. What if, an, or say, what if I wanted to turn this into like a keychain? I would like to add those features back in. Well, I can go back to that sketch. So you can either right click on the sketch that it just was, or you can go down to the timeline, right click on the sketch icon down there, go to edit sketch. Okay. Simple way to add like a key ring or something. I'm going to start a circle, center point circle, right on there. Draw it outward. That's kind of weird. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to start a circle out here, and then I'm going to show you how to use some of the constraints. So how big is a key ring? Well, not a key ring, but just like a little loop or something. Uh, the inside of it maybe should be about five millimeters. Oh, that was loud. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Now I can either create another circle outside of that, or Let's use the offset tool because I like to be lazy and also it's easier to work with. I want a thickness around that circle of, let's say two millimeters. Okay, now the benefit of using the uh, offset tool is now if I decide, oh, you know what? That inner, that inside needs to actually be six millimeters but I still want that two millimeter thickness. Double click on the dimension there, make that six. The offset 
stays two millimeters, but expands with that original dimension. Yes. So if you're benefit doing it like that as opposed to like a hole. Yep, definitely. But two different methods to get to the same option. Use you can use the hole tool. You can use sketch on top of uh, an extrusion and you and extrude down through that extrusion to cut a hole. Different versions of the same thing. Um. Oh, that's what I was going to say is, okay, great. Now I had this floating up here because I wasn't really sure where I wanted it, how I wanted it to be, that sort of thing. Well, I would like these to actually like touch. Well, as we talked about before, one of the problems is that's a center point. So moving, okay, sure. You're going to make me look like a chump this time. It actually works. But dropping stuff right on doesn't always work. So we'll use the move tool. Great, gets close. But let's use some of the constraints to actually do the work for us. So what I'm gonna do is in this case, I'm gonna use the tangent tool. Tangent constrains a curve or anything else that they touch to another thing. So it just links it, but specifically on circles. What about using two circles? That's ah, fine. Select tangent. I'm gonna select the outside of the first circle. Then I'm gonna select the other circle. What that means is, I mean, the first thing you select is what will move. Second thing you select is to where it will move to. Snap to there. Bounces down. Little I, little uh, tangent icon stays on. This is now linked. Easy way to work. Okay. Well, I can't have, just have this circle floating out here. Let's uh, put a little curve or something on that. So let's try putting a fillet. It's not going to let me. That's okay. All right. So then let's just draw like some straight lines down. All right. So just somewhere there-ish. And then I'm going to draw this... I don't know, there, whatever. Okay. Well, I can't have this wobbly thing. That looks terrible. Again, use the constraint. Tangent, select that line. What will move to that circle, to where it will move to. Tangent snaps to right there. Very convenient. If I want, I could also use same tool. Tangent to this circle changes wildly, but now that line is a direct tangent there. Works well. Hit OK or escape in this case. I'm sorry. Uh, and I want to mirror that. So do exactly that. Mirror, select that line, mirror line. I still have the sketch line from the previous sketch, but because it's visible, I can use it. Snaps over there. Hit OK. Great. All right. So now finish sketch. Sketch disappears because reasons. <laughs> Unhide that sketch. Great. Now, I can either modify that extrusion. So right click, edit sketch or edit feature, or I can start a new extrusion. Hit there. Instead of the profile that I chose, add some to it. So I can keep adding, select there, select there, as well as those rings. Okay. But I'm gonna use join here. So it snaps all those together. However, I'm gonna hide the existing bodies just so it all joins just to that same body there. All right. Now that I've unhidden them, or now that I can unhide them, it didn't join that all together. If I'd left them there, it would have joined. You could. I'm just showing you some different options. All right, great. Well, the other thing is, is all right, well, now I have a hole, I have a badge, or I can kind of, uh, uh, like a ring hole, something like that, but it's really boring. I kind of think I would like some kind of an edge. All right, great. Well, I can go back, edit that sketch again, keep going back and forth, use the offset tool. That's really convenient. Or extrude has another feature in with it. The default extrude or thin extrude, other icon at the very top of it. This is really handy for making like thin edge walls and such. So select there. And now I can select all those edges. And we'll just use that for right now. Let's make sure to get that circle also. Now when I extrude upwards, let's say two, it creates just a ring wall. So it's not actually a full extrusion of the whole sketch. It's just that edge. And then you can define how thick the wall is. So in that case, all right, two millimeters. Just like offset, it does it again. All right, something's wrong here. <laughs> the tangent worked here. Not there. These things happen. All right. But you can see how the, uh, oh, God, it didn't work there either. That is awful. 
okay, so the mirror wasn't going to work very well for this feature because I was afraid of this uh, because this sketch and everything wasn't smack in the middle. That's okay. Figure this out. Select new body. We'll let that stay. Okay. Now I do have to go back and uh, edit the sketch out after all. So right click, go back to sketch. Okay. The problem is, and I can see it right here. I didn't catch it before. Yes, it's a perfect mirror, but side to side is not the same. So I'm just going to do, so instead of deleting this, I'm going to apply a different uh, constraint. Now, I might get a warning that says over constrained and we'll deal with that if it is. What that means is just too much. You're trying to put too many constraints on the thing, literally. So let's select the uh, tangent tool again. Select that line, back to the circle. There we go. Again, select the line, that circle. It freaked out. <laughs> okay. Apparently that is not the thing to do. I don't know what it did. All right, but let's control Z that. Oh man. Okay, good. There we are. Okay. Apparently, whatever it whatever I did, it don't like. So instead, let's just delete this. Click there. Okay. I'm just gonna have to redraw that line. No problem. Doesn't matter where I put it, plop plop. Doesn't matter. I don't have to put in dimensions because I'm going to use constraints to define it. So constraint tangent tool. The diagonal line to the circle, snaps, same. There we go. The reason it did that before is probably because it was a mirrored line and it was just getting too many commands trying to do stuff to it. So that works. All right, finish sketch. All right, I was hoping it was going to recalculate, but apparently not. If you get a warning, <laughs> there we go. All right, to be fair, that's also kind of a little cool, but that's not what we're going for. Warning down on the timeline. That sounds Dr. Huey. Um, the icon is now yellow. That just means something needs to be fixed. So right click there, edit feature. That's A-OK. -okay. Let's fix what's going on here. Got it. it. It messed up several things, didn't it? All right. So I'm just going to select that line again. Oh, it's still doing that. That's weird. OK. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes there tends to be some kind of like trapped artifact of information built into a command from a previous uh, error. So if that happens, sometimes you can fix it by just canceling out all the selection. Sometimes you have to delete the command down here and redo it entirely. So let's see if this way works. I don't know if it will. It is not. Yeah, it's doing some weird stuff. And it might also be because it's... Uh, this part got messed up too. So let's just cancel that. I'm going to roll the history slider back. So it negates that entirely. Let's go back and fix this sketch first because right now it did not select all of the those. There we go. So finish that again. Operation new body. We're still good there. Okay. Now let's snap back to forward. Error still there. Okay. So I'm just going to delete that final one, zero it out entirely. Let's redo this. Extrude, thin extrude, select those edge lines, and we'll say one. I'll be, it's still doing it. That is weird. Huh. That is really weird. I have no idea why it's doing that. Okay, well, let's try this instead. Just the two circles, and we'll omit those lines for now. Maybe by doing something else, or maybe by doing multiple extrusions, it will change. So I want that to be too, too tall and two millimeters thick. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Select OK. And let's try doing it again as a separate tool. Right click. I can just use the, uh, the quick command here. Repeat extrude. Thin extrude, those edges, say two. All right, that is just weird. I have no idea why it's doing that all on one side. Okay, let's try that then. Maybe there's something about because it was two sides of something. I don't know. So what I did is I changed the wall location. 
before it was side one and then see it was doing on the inside of that one but the outside of that one so maybe it has something to do with the orientation where it's like working in a circle i'm not sure or maybe we can try symmetric now that is just really weird oh okay i think i know how i can make this work okay so it was doing side one i want this on the inside and it's defaulting to cut. I don't want it to cut. I want it to join. So it's defaulting on the inside, but the outside of that one. So then we might have to stack these entirely. Same. All right. One side. Let it join. Okay. Let that calculate. Repeat extrude. And do just that edge line. I need to do a thin extrude so I can select just the edge. All right. Again, distance two. Thickness two. It's putting it on the outside here. I don't know why that's so weird, but change the wall location to side two. Now it's on the inside. It's trying to cut. Switch that to join. Okay, now we got it. And these are some of the just weird workarounds that it's not necessarily anything you are doing. It simply can be a calculation error or just something within the program itself. And you might have to just tweak some of the settings. There's always going to be, or sorry, not always. There's often going to be some weird workarounds for stuff. Anyway, there we go. That fixed it. That was super funky. Okay, so let's control save. Uh, backing added. Okay. Uh, last thing is if you decided again, or if you decided you didn't link all these when you could have. Let's go ahead and link them all now. I'm going to hide the sketches just to clean it up a little bit. Select all the things by using a selection box from left to the right, or you could use a right to the left selection box because I'm selecting everything. It doesn't matter. And now I'm going to go to, and you could also just select it here on the hierarchy tree, the combine tool and modify. Select there. Problem is, is I did that target body. All of the things, operation combined, thanks sound wave. Select OK. Now it collapsed everything into one. Let's rename that as Jedi Badge or Jedi Kitty, if I can spell correctly. There we go. OK. There we are. Now, are there tweaks to be done and make it a little bit better? Definitely. Control save. Uh, all joined, just adding my icons and, or adding my notes. Just so y'all know, as I'm adding that stuff, let's see my Jedi badge, making all of these versions, you can see the little notes that I've added to here. It just tells you what I've done there. That's all. Um, all right, so that's pretty much that's pretty much the project. Are there additional things you could do with this? Yes, I'm not expecting y'all to jump on all of this stuff. These are just some things you can play with. You can also add fillets, excuse me, or chamfers, which a chamfer is just a diagonal corner, whereas a fillet is a rounded corner. You can add that to edges if you want. So like this, eh, let's uh, do a rounded corner there. And well, let's make it like a little more significant, significant so you can see. So now, the edge of the thing is curved. That's all. So you can add little features like that. Play around with this kind of stuff. The uh, the fillets and stuff like that. Play around. You're gonna. You might get errors if you go too far. Like, all right, the thing is only th these. This little bottom disc here is only two millimeters thick. So what happens if I add it for five millimeters? Won't do it. I get an error down there. It can't be done. But if I drop it back down to like two, yeah, it cuts it in. It's pretty good. Uh, I can do the same for, say, like my badge here. That's all pretty sharp edged. Do another fillet. I can select the whole top surface. So it'll so it'll put a fillet on both sides. And we'll just say one, one millimeter thickness. Too much. There's going to be there are some errors. Sometimes like sharp corners runs into errors. So we'll try something smaller like 0.5. Same. All right. So you might run into errors with if you do stuff like this. If it is, try shrinking the size of the fillet. 
And it's giving me an error anyway. All right, went through with a 0.1 radius millimeter or 0.1 millimeter radius rather. So, eh, not really even working there. There's ways to fix that. We'll talk about it later. But um, main thing is you're trying to create a sketch. If it's a very plain sketch, add some features to it. Add some more to it. You can extrude at different levels, join all the things together into a single object. And this is something we could sketch. The one last thing I wanted to show you all on this is text. Uh, so text is a sketch function. So you can either go back and edit a sketch or you can add a sketch. I'm going to add a sketch, but what I'm going to do, instead of creating this within the origin plane, which we normally would have done, selecting that XY plane, I want to make sure it's on top of my badge. So if I instead mouse over the surf, that whole flat surface, you see how that highlights? Now it's going to create on that. I don't know why it just turned upside down. You can use little arrow keys on the uh, um, view cube here to finish that or fix that. So I can add text here. We got the text function. Select text. You can either create just text as a block or you can create it text on a path. Uh, let's see here. Let's just create a block first. Just drawing out a block. There we go. Sample text. You have all the options of font and font control and size and all that stuff. So let's see here. Ribble skin. Why not? Why not? Um, you've got some functions here. Of course, you can center things. You can squish it around. You can mirror it. If maybe maybe this is going to be a badge or, or sorry, a badge, a, uh, a stamp or something. You can make it bold. Change it around. There are going to be some fonts that don't translate very well. And if it is, and eh, we'll deal with that. Is there any that are not lame? Probably not. <laughs> These are all pretty standard. There we go. Let's just make this horrible. Comic Sans. Yeah. But there's Papyrus, too. <laughs> all right. We won't get into font jokes. Anyway. All right. Fine. Rebel Scum. There we go. Um, click OK. Now, this will show up. Select that. You can see it shows up as a sketch. From that sketch, you will then have to extrude that. So finish sketch. Hid the sketches, of course. Let's hide those first ones. Now, this isn't going to work right now because it's a smack in the middle of that, but I just want to show you all how this functions. Extrude. Now, this is one issue with, with uh, creating text that gets a little funky. So I'm going to extrude that to, let's say, two millimeters. All right, cool. It goes up. Now, it assumes I want to cut. I don't. Let's go to join. Now, it goes as a regular. You could go negative, too. You could emboss down into. So let's say negative. has to be cut so that's going to slice into the thing but man let's leave it as join and positive uh delete there we go okay so it's going to emboss up there now this is joining if you would leave if you leave this as new body what it's going to do is it's going to create every one of those letters as its own body sometimes that's beneficial sometimes not so you deal with that as you need to Right click on, edit feature, go back, change that to join. There we go. All right. That kind of works, but it also is kind of lame. Let's make it a little more interesting. Go back to sketch. I want this to be on, so I don't know why it keeps going upside down. I want this to be more of as a rounded object or as a rounded thing. So let's create a sketch or sorry, not create a sketch, create a circle here. Uh, something like that. And let's offset that line. Sure, negative 15. Okay, that works. Now, the other thing is these lines are going to intersect stuff. I would like to change those to construction lines. There we go. Now it's gonna, not going to interfere with anything. Now, the problem is, is I can't select the sketch. With, but normally, what you do, double click the sketch. That will bring back up the edit text. 
I don't know why you can't why it's why it makes you do that. Select the text on path option. Ugh, come on. It's not letting me change it back. Not sure why. Fine. Then just delete it, jerk. I don't know why it's not letting me change. That's weird. Fine, we'll delete it. <coughs> text again. I want to text on path. Select my path. All right. So this gets a little weird in aligning stuff. Sometimes it gets really awkward trying to get it to align properly. And that just depends on the orientation of the drawing. But I think this is doing this because for whatever reason, it was flipping it upside down. I'm not sure. So how you can correct that is choose an alignment that gets close. And then just start adding. Um, uh, it's not doing it there either. How oh, weird. Usually, if you just add, there we go. Seems to not want to use, uh, oh, now it's working. I was just putting spaces in between the text or uh, before the text in the actual uh, uh, input box here, but it wasn't responding. I don't know why. There we go. So we'll go to center alignment and try to get this to align. Now, this isn't going to work right. So what I'm going to do <laughs> is I'm going to delete that and just put rebel and you can play with the placement as well if the text goes above or below the line i don't know why there's not a through the line option but there we are that gets kind of goofy um we'll put above and i can change that circle in a minute uh we'll hit okay all right obviously that's not exact we'll deal with it do another one right to there again and we're going to have to still play with the alignment here. So if you want it to be more like that, eh, have to deal with. So there we are. You can text on a path. Are those aligned very well? Not at all. But this is just because it has this spike through it. There's better ways of doing it, but make this work. The other thing I could do is still change the diameter of these circles. So go back to dimension. There, just bring it out. Over constraints. Okay, fine, whatever. There we go. I just want to bring out that dimension. Let me change it, jerk. All right, that's weird. It's not letting me change the circle. Oh, right. Okay, I need to change the outside when I forgot that was an offset. There you go. The um, dimension for the first circle is still there. Double click on that. I just want to shrink that a little bit. Uh, let's see what happens with 13 millimeters. There we go. I forgot those offset changes a little bit. Uh, okay, let's make that. Uh, oh, wait, that is what's. Oh, no, 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 no. I forget which, which is which here. There we go. That is showing the spacing of the offset. I forgot I needed to change the size of the outer circle. That will let me fix this. Okay, there we go. That's what I was trying to remember. Order of stuff that you've stacked get, can get really confusing really fast. Okay, now I can double click on this and let's try to fix this uh, spacing a little bit. That's slightly less worse. Same. Eh, not great, but there we are. Okay, finish sketch. Now I just need to change the um, extrude that I had done before. So let's unhide that. Select these now. And now I have my text showing up. There we go. Um, as a relief there. Sorry, the word fell out of my head. So 
obviously this design doesn't really allow for this sort of text path or text on a path around a circle or such, but you could, but I could have drawn like lines in between. You can add it to, you can expand your ring and, make, and add it to the outside, something like that. Do you have to add text? No, this is just simply a way, something I wanted to add in just to show you all how to make use of path or how to make use of um, text rather. Okay. So that's pretty much it. We will be going over this more next class. I know that's a lot of stuff to throw at you, but initial part of the initial uh, startup, there's a lot of basics to learn. Do I expect you to know all of this stuff? No, we will certainly go over these in class. I'll troubleshoot issues with you. Um, and of course, let me know if you have questions or issues or anything like that. The good thing is, is I can open up your files online and have a look. This will be archived. So uh, I will change the ass assignment to it. Well, you will not be able to uh, alter this, but you will be able to cycle through the tools and such. So this model, this example will be in our folder. Good luck with your project and let me know where I can help. And video.